Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And today I want to talk about something about which I've been getting a lot of emails and inquiries from concerned women um, asking basically what they should do about this. And it's, it concerns this new HPV test that is being suggested as a potential alternative to a pap test. So I'll just start by saying, and you all know this, I have no love and admiration for drug and device makers. I abhor these people. I think that they're criminals. I agree with uh, Peter Gacci. The drug and device makers and their partners at the FDA are notorious for solving non-existent problems. And a prime example is the development of the Me Too drugs. We have enough cholesterol drugs on the market. We don't need any more. But the reason why the FDA allows more and more of these types of drugs to enter the market is to expand the marketing opportunities for the drug companies. That's why I call the FDA partners to the drug companies. Well, the latest and perhaps the most egregious example of this whole thing is the FDA's approval for an alternative to pap test for cervical can uh, cancer screening. And there's absolutely no need for this because since pap tests were introduced, cervical cancer death rates have plummeted, literally plummeted, in every population in which they've been introduced. Um, you guys have heard me for years criticize diagnostic testing. This is one test that actually, screening test, that actually does work, and I recommend it highly. But drug companies see things differently. Any opportunity to make money, justified or not, must be taken advantage of. Roche, one of the worst and most ethically impaired drug companies um, in the world, is behind this new product. And what it is is a test to detect the DNA of the human papillomavirus, which is a contributing factor, not the only factor, in the development of cervical dysplasia. Now, this is a goldmine for the medical profession and drug companies, since as much as 90% of the entire population is infected with HPV at some point in time in their lives. Now, the infection almost always clears itself and by itself cannot and does not cause cervical dysplasia or cervical cancer. But tens of millions of women are now going to be told if they actually have this test that they have a disease that requires treatment as a result and they will be subjected to more tests and more treatment. It's one of the best examples of disease mongering I've ever seen. And I have to confess an almost secret admiration for companies that A, can put ethics aside in this particular way and dream up this stuff to make money. I wish I could dream up ways to make money like these people. All right, well, the committee hired to advise the FDA unanimously endorsed the test, but I'm not the only person who thinks it's a terrible idea. Many medical and consumer organizations have been speaking out, and the concern is that the test, which is unproven, would result in women foregoing the PAP test, which is proven and does work and it does uh, prevent deaths from cervical cancer. Now the FDA's commentary, they disagree, and as usual, they stand behind their business partner, in this case, Roche Labs. An FDA spokesperson stated that the FDA just looked at safety and efficacy for the test, and now it's up to the medical community to determine whether or not to use the test and how it should be used. The FDA says it's just making another option available. Now this ridiculous statement may satisfy some, but it's a miserable explanation for approving an unproven test and placing millions of women at risk who may forego effective pap tests or be subjected to more tests and procedures as a result of a positive HPV test. The FDA's approval allows for the HPV test to be used as a primary screening tool for women over 25 and to use pap testing only as a follow-up. But the test is useless. Again, almost all of us have had HPV and cleared it. Roche's suggestions are based on faulty science, which assumes that HPV is the cause of cervical cancer. It's not true. The company suggests that if the test is positive for the two strains it claims most often are responsible for cervical dysplasia, that women immediately should have a colposcopy. Now this is a miserable and painful procedure. I had it back in the days when I didn't know any better. And there are risks associated with it, including preterm births. It should only be performed to confirm that a woman has cervical dysplasia or to grade the level of dysplasia in order to determine treatment. Roche goes on to say that if a woman tests positive for any of the other 12 types of HPV the test can detect, then they should have a pap test to see if colposcopy is needed. This is a lot of testing that provides absolutely no new information to women or their doctors. To add insult to injury, pap tests are cheap. They cost between $20 and $40 on average. This useless HPV test costs between $80 and $100. And of course, it's going to lead to a lot of expensive procedures and tests that may be completely unnecessary 
that will lead to more suffering and nervous and anxiety uh, reactions in women who think maybe something's wrong, oh my gosh. We wonder why the medical system is so expensive and bloated and ineffective. This is an example, and the FDA is completely unconcerned with any of this. Uh, they're, they're just concerned with helping their partners make money. I wish I could be shocked. I'm outraged. I think it's awful, and that's why I'm commenting on it, and I'm telling women it's another place where you just got to say no. Do not let anybody give you this test. But um, it's a standard operating procedure for the FDA and the drug companies. They really don't care how much money they spend. They don't care how many people they hurt. They just care about keeping the profits rolling in. Now, the FDA doesn't directly make money off of drug company profits, but the agency is funded by drug companies, and there are a lot of wonderful things that happen to FDA regulators, including jobs at drug companies when they leave and, and that sort of thing, which is one of the reasons they take real good care of their friends. So learn to just say no. This is a horrible, horrible thing that the FDA has done, and um, uh, I, I don't know where this is going to go, but I'm just, I'm outraged but not shocked. All right, that's all for today. It's all for this week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. Have a great day and a great weekend. I'll talk to you next Tuesday.